Hey, Jamie, how you doing tonight? Good, how are you, Mike? Good. Thought we'd talk a little uh, preview time for Penn State and Illinois. Um, you know, Penn State's been off for a little while. they got a pretty funky schedule with this Olympic cycle. Uh, have you been paying attention to their season so far? I have. Uh, and you're right. I mean, they took half, three-quarters of December off. Hopefully the... The guys that did some freestyle in between there are uh, recovered and fresh uh, because for the most part, there's no other breaks. It'll be a normal college season from here on out. Big Ten schedule starts. Uh, There's no tournaments. So, I mean, they have no two-day tournament to prep prior to Big Tens. But it's a straight normal schedule from this point on out. Yep. And you know, the last time we saw, uh, you know, uh, their heavyweight, Kassar, he did not look like he would be in the lineup. He forfeited out of yeah. his uh, semifinal match at uh, the U.S. Open, U.S. Nationals, whatever the name is this year. So I, I guess coming into this match, you know, Penn State's probably maybe the number two dual team. If you have Iowa ahead of them right now, especially if Kassar is out, but you never know who they're going to pull out of red shirt to make up for that. And I would, yeah, I would say they're definitely number two, just because of the uncertainty. Uh, I mean, even before eighty four, ninety seven, two eighty five drama has or changes that have come in, I think they were still number two, just because Iowa's is a much stronger one to 10 than what Penn state is right now. Yep. So they, they come in at number two and I have Illinois right around number 20. And just looking at this match, right, the difference between two and 20, if Kassar wasn't hurt, you went straight chalk. It'd just be, it'd be a shutout, but there's a bunch yeah. of really good matches. And unfortunately for Illinois, a bunch of their studs, you know, you know, bisect right into a bunch of the Penn state studs. Right. So, uh, you know, be interesting to talk a little about some of the matches. There are some, uh, you know, things to watch. Um, you know, do you have anything else before I just jump into 125? No, I mean, I would, yeah, definitely just go at it. Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, so Brandon Meredith is who we'd expect to wrestle versus uh, uh, Justin Cardani. And, you know, Meredith, it's like the tale of two wrestlers a little bit. You know, he, um, you know, got pulled out of the shirt or whatever it was off the shelf after they, uh, they 125 wasn't working for them. Um, and he wasn't looking super strong, especially after that Lehigh match with Patesel, but that the next weekend or the next day he beats Michael Kolioko, uh, you know, by a couple points and then goes on and, you know, he has a really good Wilkes open against nobody who is, uh, he, the guys I knew were, you know, he beat a Penn State guy by forfeit and then a major Shunk, Baylor Shunk, who is, I think he's gray shirting. I don't know if he's actually with Penn State. And then the other guys I've never even heard of. Um, so, it, yeah, know. he's, I mean, the Colo win, we'll have to see if it's going to turn out to be legit or if it's just the uh, blip on the radar because it doesn't add up to his other matches. Because right. if you look at. Like, Cardini lost a 1-0 match to Hildebrandt, and Meredith got major at 8-0. But yet, Colo beat, or uh, Meredith beat Colo, and Colo majored Cardini. Yeah. So, the Colioco is the outlier for now, so I'm hoping that that's kind of a sight of where what the how high the bar could be, and it goes up from there, but uh, it's just hit or miss at this point. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that, you know, one, you know, Penn State fans should be seeing which Brandon Meredith shows up. Did he make a jump? You know, did he have early season jitters or it was a Kolioko thing? Was Kolioko nicked up? Was he sick? Was it, you know, a bad weight descent? Because I, I know he is cutting weight. So this will be interesting to see, you know, Penn State fans get to see, all right, do we have someone who could possibly start to we think about scoring points come Big Ten's? Or not. Yeah, I mean, the the whole Teske thing is still up in the air. It's like, are they done? I mean, is he going to wrestle? Are they going to split matches? I mean, you would think his pedigree would be that he should be 
the starter and should be winning and should be NCAA qualifier level, but it just isn't there right now. Yeah, and I I will just say I haven't heard anything to the along the lines that Teske is um, competitive with Meredith in the room. Not that I'm in the okay. room. However, that's just, you know, that's what you hear. And, uh, um, you know, it's crazy that even it shows you that having a dual team is harder than a tournament team. This has been a hole since Suriano left for Rutgers, and they haven't been able to figure it out for three seasons. Right. You know? Yeah. But that said, I'm taking Brandon Meredith here. No, I agree. I think he should win this uh, for sure. I think that you know one of the keys for Penn State fans is if Meredith can get to bonus points, and if he can, and show that there is separation from uh, Cardani, you know that maybe the Kolioko match wasn't an outlier, and that he is going to step in to fill that role. He's a local boy to to both of us out of O and J, and it's fun to see local guys do good. So uh, I'm looking forward to to watching him. I am hoping he makes that that transition. Absolutely. I mean, everybody in the state is rooting for the kid, is pulling for him because God knows they want to have somebody at 125 that's going to start scoring points. Totally. All right, so we both got uh, Meredith at 25, going up to 33. We got uh, Justin Piotrowski, who's a senior for Illinois, comes in around number 10, I think. And then you got Roman Bravo Young, who is a sophomore, comes in around number 5. Um, Piotrowski, I've seen him wrestle over the last few years when I used to cover the Big Ten a little more regularly, and I he just never made the jump. I feel like he's almost as good when he was a freshman and a sophomore as he is right now. Um, and on the other hand, Roman Bravo Young doesn't have that same wide open style, I don't think, that we saw, especially early last season. So it's going to be an interesting bout. You know, Young hasn't faced anybody in the top. I don't think he's faced anybody in the top ten this year. Um, so no, I mean they haven't had a lot of matches. They haven't no tournaments. Uh, yeah, I mean Piotrowski is one of the better, higher uh, ranked guys that they have. But unfortunately for them, they this is one where Penn State's ranked a little higher. Uh, and like you said, if if RBY opens it up. I think it could be a major, but uh, I would just put it down for a regular decision at this point. Yeah, I think I, I see that too. I think that, uh, you know, RBY's attacks, I think he's just too quick, especially uh, with some of his low-level attacks. I think Piotrowski has trouble changing levels for his head and hands defense. Uh, and if he does get in, from what I, I watched some film on him, I just don't feel like he finishes fast enough. So even though he's beaten some kids between the 15 and 20 ranking, you know, RBY is a different cat. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's a training cycle. We have not seen the entire Penn State team look as dynamite as we've seen them look in the past years. Uh, you know, there's rumors about, you know, the leadership of the personality changing. Um, so it would be interesting to see where he's at as we go forward early this uh you know, January and February, but I have Young winning, uh, and for Penn State fans, I would say, like, you know, bonus points is a good sign, regular decisions a push, and a loss, obviously, is a loss. Right. Um, you know, Piotrowski did lose by six points to DeSanto, it was at Midlands, and, you know, those were all just takedown escapes, so I'm not sure he's going to be able to get in, I don't know, we'll see, I, I'm, I'm taking Young. And I would think RBY should be able to do similar to what uh, DeSanto did to him on his feet if that was the case. Yeah. All right, moving up to 41. We got, we're expecting Nick Lee, who comes in around, I don't know, top two or three, uh, versus Dylan Duncan, who's around 25. Um, Nick Lee, uh, you know, is, he's aggressive. He's the one guy on the team that I feel like has the same attack rate as this year as last year so whatever is going on there i don't feel like it's, a it's affected him and i think that he only has one regular decision all season everything else is bonus point wins so i'm looking at him to pick apart duncan on his feet duncan you know has a loss to max murin at midlands 
Um, was that uh, that was in the wrestlebacks? And you know, he, he did. Uh, there's a medical forfeit, so I don't. He hasn't had any wins over anybody in the top twenty right now. He's lost to Luke Pletcher, Pletcher lost to. Um, so I don't even know how to say that guy's name out of Central Michigan, Simone. So I got oh, Nick Dresden. Yeah, he split with him. Did so I'm taking Lee, and I think the push if you're if you're a betting person is a major decision. And if it's more than a major, you got to think of it as a positive for Penn State. And if it's less than a major, you think as a an emotional win for uh, Illinois. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, Philly's looking for uh, looking for major tech pin from Lee all year long. They he's the one one of the few guys. I mean, they, they have to count on. I mean, to win duels, they got to major through five six weights. Major bonus plus. Yeah. All right, going up to forty nine. Got uh, we're expecting Jared Reclearing. You know, it could be uh, Luke Gardner. You never know what they're going to do over there. Um, and, you know, he comes in, I don't know, between 30 and 40. He's had a, you know, a mixed season. And Illinois has got someone coming in who's, you know, kind of, you know, unknown to me. Uh, Musa Jetta, I believe yeah. it is. And, no uh, and so for clearing, you know, he's had a, you know, had trouble generating his own offense. Uh but, you know, he had a great Wilkes, all bonus points there. Um, you know, he lost to Jimmy Hoffman uh, and Josh Maruka. Those are his losses this year. I was at the Hoffman match. And sudden victory may be a better strategy. You know, he may have won that. I think he just wanted to go for it. Uh, you know, but his, his issue is generating offense. I don't think that'll be a problem in this match. And, right. you know, with his ability to go big, I... I just see this as being, um, you know, I think he's going to pin him. <laughs> I mean, that's not easy to do, but I think he's for clearing is one of those guys who generally he's got one of the better mental games. I'm not sure he has the physical talent necessarily. You know, he hasn't been able to figure out those attacks other than maybe that super duck or variations of that. But I'm, I'm taking him with six. No, I agree. He's going to. He can generate upper body offense, uh, so I think he's going to do that, and he's going to go and get double overs or something and get the pin. All right, clean clean sweep so far. Going up to 157, we got Brady Berge versus Eric Barone of Barone Sanitation from the Sopranos. Uh, <laughs> Berge, I, I'm not sure we're going to see him. He has wrestled one match since his head injury. Wrestled the Lehigh duel and then has been out since. And I was watching. Uh, well, what did they have after the Lehigh duel? Well, they had a bunch of the team ended up going to Wilkes to get matches in. Okay. Right? And he did not go there. Um, and the one thing I noticed when he was warming up for that Lehigh match is that it seemed like one of the coaches was back there with him to make sure he felt okay during the warm up. Uh, and then paid extra attention afterwards to see if he, how he responded to that match. And I'm guessing they, they don't want to push him. Uh, you know, the worst thing for a head injury is to come back too soon. That will extend the healing time or compound it. And uh, you know, I know at least two or three guys who have lost their entire career from coming back too soon from concussions. Right. So if it is Berge, Barone is another one like Piotrowski for me. I feel like he was almost the same level, um, you know, two years ago as he is now. He hasn't, I don't feel like he's made, you know, broken through any wins in the top 50. Like, you know, even as a freshman, I watched him wrestle, I think at Rutgers and maybe Penn State, same, same kind of stuff. So, I mean, if it's Berge, I imagine that he is going to get bonus points. And if it's not Berge, and Berge has not, has been kind of stingy putting up the points, but Barone is not necessarily, you know, at his level. He's not at his level. So I, I could see that Bergie could have a possibility, if he's wrestling, to get bonus points. And if it's not, if they put Bo Pfeiffer in there, I got to think that he's going to win with at least a regular decision. Right. No, I agree. I think Bergie, uh 
unless there's something that's not being said, I think Berkey has gotten enough of the rest and all that stuff. Uh, he should be the one. He should be going. And this should be a guy he bonuses for sure. All right, all right. Going up to 65, we got Vincenzo Joseph versus Danny Brongo. Brongo, yep. Uh, and, you know, Joseph comes in at, you know, number one. Brongo, is that it? Is that how you say it? Brongo? Yep. Brongo. Uh, he comes in in the top 20, maybe between 15 and 20. Um, you know, he has beat, uh, he's got some good wins, right? He beat Zach Hartman. He beat Kennedy Monday. Um and I will just say that, like, Joseph didn't look like his, I don't want to say his normal aggressive self. We've only seen a small snapshot. But I thought he was going to have a better match versus Shields. And then at the Lehigh match versus Meyer, Meyer was blocking. But I feel like Joseph could have put, you know, maybe a little more into a misdirection or a better setup. He only won by three points, and Meyer is not having. He's a good high school wrestler, but he's having a tough freshman year. And right. uh, you know, and you know, then he pinned uh, what Jake Le- Lezak in the pen match, right? Um, so, yeah, this is a, a tough one to see if uh, if it's a training cycle that's got Vincenzo down. There are whispers, you know, that he is enjoying his senior year to its fullest. So. That'll be cu- I'll be curious to see if he can turn it on and if uh, you know if Bronigal can give him you know uh, any kind of challenge. He's lost close to McFadden. Marinelli got bonus points on him, but this is one of those things where you know it's a measuring stick. And if you know Joseph doesn't start turning on that motor, you know it makes me wonder where what we'll see come March. No, I agree. I think he needs definitely needs to. Show the he he can't just walk around and say I'll oh, I'll turn it on at NCAA's or Big Tens because that we've seen it too many times it, it doesn't happen you'll get upset you'll be uh, the next Dean Heil or something to where you're a two time champ and then you don't place your senior year and that kind of thing uh, so I'm hoping he ramps it up and starts to get that momentum going. This should be a major tech fall type win uh, match. And I'm hoping that it's going to be the springboard for the rest of the semester. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that he can find the discipline his senior year to, to really, you know, he, he was my favorite wrestler for at least three years. Right. Before the falling out. So uh, anyway, (laughs) Uh, going up to 74. We got uh, Iowa transfer Joey Gunther versus number one Mark Hall. Gunther's coming in around number fifteen. He's had a pretty good season. Um, Hall has been, uh, you know, what's the only one regular decision? Jordan Cutler all season. So Hall's having a a good season again. Not wrestling a ton of people, but like he ended up going to the Wilkes Open. Now, talk about padding your stats. I think he pinned everybody. Uh, no, no, I'm looking up one major decision. So, yeah, Jordan Cutler, he beat Cutler 7-2. to two, And if you looked at the video, you know, that's probably, if the, you know, he was on his back for at least a second and a half there in, in that match. So, <laughs> Oh, I don't know, man. That Expecting the official to be in that position to make that call. I got gotcha. you. I got you. All right. So Gunther, he's having a good season too, though, and his only loss this uh, is it is it uh, to Ben Harvey? Let me see. And no, Bryce Steyart from Northern Iowa lost to him he in Midlands. He split with Harvey. He split with Harvey. Yeah. So, so he also uh, no, that's last year. So okay. yeah, he he split with Harvey this year. So I'd be curious to see. So this he's coming in, you know. Kate transferred from Iowa, couldn't get in the lineup after, uh, you know, Kemmerer and Marinelli and everybody's kind of moving up a little bit. Um, you know, he's been here for, uh, I think, two years at Illinois. And, uh, you know, if he keeps it, again, I hate to use the word psychological victory but or emotional victory. If he keeps it to a, a regular decision, you got to think it is, you know, it's a win for the Illinois team and Joey Gunther. You know, a push might be a major 
and uh, you know a tech fall or a pin, and we haven't seen Hall pinning quality guys in the top twenty like we did when he was younger. People have caught on to some of his neutral game, but you know a tech or a pin would be a, a win for Hall. Right. I mean, he should definitely uh, take it to Gunther. Gunther likes to slow it down, which does work against Hall sometimes because he's so counter offensive. Uh, but and not that it's a totally a bad thing, but Hall has gotten kind of content with riding people like horses and just holding them down for like five, six minutes of a match. Uh, which would make it hard to get bonus. But, uh, again, Hall should be looking for bonus. Should be expected to get bonus from just about everyone outside the top four. Yeah. And last year he did, he pinned Gunther in the first period. We'll see. We'll see where things go again this year. But so far, you know, it's all Penn State. Now, going up to 84, kind of an interesting matchup here. We got... You know, true freshman, true freshman, no, red shirt, no, true freshman. True. True freshman, Aaron Brooks. Gray shirted, true gray shirted freshman. That's what we're saying. Um, Now, he's undefeated on the season. I I got to see the Weiler match. His neutral attacks are pretty fantastic. Yes. And, And being able to roll around with Chris Weiler, and Weiler wasn't maybe in the best cardio shape. During that match, and you know, I think he'll probably get better as the season goes on. But you know, if you're a freshman, if you've never felt somebody move around like Weiler does, it you can he it works. Weiler's you know rolls work, but it didn't work on Brooks maybe one time. So I, I mean, Brooks looks seasoned. We know he's kicked butt at the uh, at the senior level or in the freestyle circuit. So I mean, he's seen a lot of tough competition, and uh, you know. You know, Bronigal, let's see, has he's beaten, let's see, lost to Abasad, and then he beat Brand, he built, beat Nelson Brands, and he lost to Cash Wilkie close. And then who else did he beat here? He beat Caffey, who was also ranked. So it could be an interesting match. Just kind of see which guy shows up, you know, which Zach Bronigal shows up. And, you know, this could be a tussle because, you know, Brands is one of those guys who's not going to stop for an entire match, and to beat him by a point means that you've got that kind of conditioning to go um, with that guy, even though he's a little bit smaller. Um, losing the cash, Wilkie by two, I think that was a, a late loss. So it's one of these things where this could be a, a little bit of a, a, a challenge for uh, for Brooks. You know, Bronigo also beat uh, Cameron Caffey from Michigan State. Who was number thirteen at the time, fifteen to seven, and that's that's a nice win for uh, for a guy who, who's a little inconsistent. So I, I'm not gonna say bonus points for Brooks. I see a lot of takedowns and maybe some let him up, um, you know. But I think it'll be closer than most people think. Maybe 10, 10 to nine or ten six. I I don't know, but it's a regular decision. If it's more than a regular decision, it's got to be a win for Brooks at Penn State. Yeah, I think Brooks will major him. He just has looked impressive with the the last couple matches he's had. Uh, I think he's going to go out and put a, a major uh, on him. So, you know, we heard after the fact that Brooks had beaten uh, Rashid out from, you know, in a in a wrestle off, and that's one of the reasons that Brooks is at eighty four. It, it also, I mean, you hear all sorts of things. I'd also heard that, uh, you know, Michael Beard had beat Connell out uh, in a, in the room. So, and there were talks. I mean, I didn't think Brooks and Rashid even wrestled off because I thought Rashid that, wanted to go up. Right. And and it, also that they were saving him from going live, you know, until later in the season because they need his points come March. So I don't know. You know, everybody is saying something different. I know what I've heard. Uh, I'm I'm just assuming we're going to see Kyle Cannell here. I don't think we'd see Shakur Rashid, but he's definitely going to need to knock some rust off to make a a push <clears throat> at the Big Ten. Um, uh, well, Cannell walked off. I'm trying to think when was the la- what was the match, but he walked off pretty much like holding his shoulder, like 
he was uh, like he couldn't move, and it, like he had hurt it again. Was that the U Penn so. match, or is that the Jake Jacobson match, uh, Lehigh? So I'd lost. have to look to see when he wrestled last, but uh, we well, had a hurt. he had a medical forfeit at the Black Knight Open, and then uh, he got the I don't want to say destroyed, but dominated by uh, Cordell Norfleet, who you know is probably number ten or fifteen in the country. And then he lost to uh, Lehigh's Jacobson three to one, and then uh, he beat Cole Urbes from UPenn six to five. So I don't know if he walked off from that match. I didn't see the Penn match uh, holding his shoulder, but I mean I'm not sure if, if we're going to see him there or versus Matt uh, Robleski. Robleski. I'm sorry, Matt. I apologize. Uh, if, yeah, I'm trying to think if it was Urbis or... I mean... I Yeah, I just feel like he he's hurt. Like, that shoulder is bad again. But, uh... I, I'm thinking you're, it's going to be Rashid and it's going to be him the rest of the semester, rest of the year, and, uh... It, it, he's just gonna be getting trying to get those fifteen matches in to qualify for points for uh, Big Tens. Right. Well, if it's Canell and he and he struggles, it, it's got to be the final nail in, in his experimental coffin here because you know uh, the Illinois wrestler is maybe number fifty in the country, um, and if it's Rashid, we'll see you know if he's a hundred percent if he's got his cardio there. Um, I mean, Penn State should win either way. You know, the thing that Rashid brings is some big moves. So, you know, we'll see if he is um, if he's in the lineup. Either way, I got to go with Penn State. I guess the wild card would be if they pulled Michael Beard, which I can't imagine. Yeah, but, yeah, I would be floored because uh, that that says Canell and Rashid are both hurt and or. Uh... They don't have any confidence in him. Well, he'll be at my practice all week, so I'll, I'll get the inside scoop, but I'm not going to tell you anybody, okay? <laughs> so, Why would he be at practice this week? I don't know. You just I just got the announcement. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's... Breaking news. Yeah, Michael they, Beard is skipping classes. Yeah, he'll be at the uh, Malvern Wrestling Club. Be there, be square. Uh, go, be, going up to 285, final match of the night. Uh, Luke Hoffman, we know for Illinois and for Penn State, I don't know what we're going to see. I, I, I don't think we're going to see Anthony Kassar. And the question, nope. for, you know, the question I think for the Penn State coaches is: Do they go? Do they not pull Seth Nevels? Do they? And I don't know. Seth Nevels is he gray shirted already? And this is a red shirt, right? So I think. He's on the same plan with Beard and and Brooks to where they gray shirted last year and they, except for Brooks, uh, they're red shirting this year. Right. So uh, to me, and this is, you know, multiple layers of thinking. All right. They just got Kirkfleet and uh, he's not eligible this year. Absolutely. But does that make the choice to pull? Because if they want to be in the running, they need points at 285. If Kassar, oh, if, absolutely. If, if there's a chance that Kassar can come back, maybe they wait. But I would think if I were, and no, I'm not the coach, but I would think they're going to pull Nevels because they need to get him as many matches as possible. Well, that's you're going down an interesting path because you already have overlap with him and uh Kirkley. There's no way they both are going to be in the lineup for four years. Yeah. And and those guys can't cut. I don't n- neither of them are making one ninety seven. That's uh you there, Jamie? Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean it's it's a hundred percent. It's uh it they I mean they're both gonna be competing and it's like what is Neville's? I mean, his brother didn't end his Penn State career on the high note that he started with. 
Uh, so is he going to stick around? I mean, Kirkley just came in. I mean, whether they say Penn State recruited over top and this or that, I mean, they have potentially a better guy coming in at the same weight. Yep. And I'm not, I've never seen them wrestle. I mean, Seth is probably a bigger, more physical version of AJ. Um, Nick being, you know, maybe just more of your t- classic he- heavyweight. And, you know, who, I don't know where Seth is. I have not, uh, you know, I, I know that he, uh, you know, beat everybody at the Wilkes Open and at the Matt Town Open. But that wasn't really telling me anything. I don't think he beat anybody that I recognized their names. You know, he beat, like, I think a couple D2 guys, a D3 guy. Uh, I did beat one guy from Lehigh, Victor Lacombe, uh, at Matt Town Open. But, you know, he, Victor is not um, a high, highly recruited dude. So I, the only thing that makes sense to me, if, if they're going to try and reload for March, is they've got to have... Rashid ready to go and battle tested, and they need to have Seth Nevels there. And if Seth could, you know, get to the, you know, get to be an All American uh, this year, you know, it keeps them in the running, and it makes it very interesting if you're a Penn State fan that they, you know, because the heavyweight once you get past, you know, uh, well, well Gable's gone. Back. Once you get yeah, past I mean, Stevenson, you're kind of like it, it's a short list. Yeah, I mean, now that Gable is back and is relatively, I'll say, cleared in air quotes and eligible and all that stuff, uh, I mean, yes, it absolutely is a tight race, uh, three through eight and all of that for the All-Americans. And uh, I think Nevels can mix it up with those guys, but do they try to – I mean, does he even want to come out and wrestle this year if he potentially would do a transfer portal and all that kind of stuff? That's the, yeah, That is an interesting question. I had a head coach tell me that transfer portal is so big right now. I think it's 15 pages. And the crazy thing is, I don't even think the assistant coaches have access to it. It's just the head coaches. Head coaches only. Head coaches only. And uh, you know, I, I wonder what it looks like between Seth – and Kassar in the room because you know they're going after it. Right. And, um, you know, we, we both watched, you know, Seth's brother Nick last year versus Kassar at the Classic. I think he won by like five, six points. Um, and I wonder if Seth is, you know, on pace to be better than Nick, or the same. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, I, let me call up Kale Sanderson. We'll, we'll find out. He'll give you some star uh, gold <laughs> tips. Uh, uh, what do we? Anything I need to read? No. Okay. Um. So there it is. I'm 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 pulling this one out. I'm calling. They're pulling the Nevels out of the red shirt, and it's a smooth ten match sweep for Penn State. That's, it wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh. Them pulling Brooks earlier uh, was kind of a go for broke kind of move that was a little surprising. Uh, but I'm going to kind of hope it doesn't happen just for Kassar's sake because it kind of, to me, feels like it would be uh, a nail in the coffin that he's done. Yeah. And I, I really, I, I, I would like to see him get that chance to uh, go back to back and uh, take advantage of that extra year. And- yeah, you and I both love his approach, and yeah. he's a great personable kid, and uh, you know he's a great story. What did he qualify yeah. for states once? Is yep, it? and he won it. Yeah, qualified and, uh, for nationals once, and he won it. Won it. So um, yeah, you hate to see, and he's been banged up. He's another guy, right? Uh, so many times, so many surgeries on this guy. I think he's had three surgeries or four surgeries or something. That's a lot of. That's a lot of. You know, there's a reason he used hemming and hawing about coming back because no one likes surgery. Like that's just the bottom line. So, all right. So I I have the score. If Neville's is pulled, thirty six to zero. That's, yeah, it, I think it's possible, not a doubt. I mean, it's back in the day they were. I mean, this is un, not uncommon. They were beating Illinois this way regularly uh, outside of the Imar matches. I mean. That, yeah, that, that makes sense. It should be a shutout. Penn State should shut out Illinois at this point. 
And and we didn't even mention Luke Hoffman, who's not a bad wrestler, uh, for uh, or I didn't, from Illinois. Um, he has some good wins. If if he's wrestling Austin Hoops, the the other person who they could Penn State could pull out, or one of them. They'll smoke him. Yeah, yeah I, ma- I imagine that that's going to be a six point win for Illinois. So we could oh end, yeah, could, yeah. It could end up being thirty to six, uh, and you know that's it. So it's welcome to the Big Ten life, boys and girls. It's you know. You, you never know what you're gonna get. It's a grind, uh, unless you embrace it and uh, find the joy and the pleasure of that that hard work. Uh, yep. So, good, good things to watch for here. What's good, you know, Brandon Meredith? What's he's gonna look like? What the pace of some of the other guys who are known commodities looks like? Whether Bergie comes back into the lineup uh, after only wrestling once? What Brooks looks like against a quality foe? Probably about the same range as Weiler was, and uh, you know what we get at ninety seven and two eighty five. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I Illinois got the advantage if uh, Luffman's out there. I mean, he's legit, but uh, it'll be good. I think Penn State should. Uh, this will be a hopefully the kickstart to get them moving, and that'll be the uh, start to a triumphant second semester. Hey, Jamie, good talk, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Sounds good.